Well, hey Art One students, it's Mrs. New here. We are gonna get started on our first project today. Hooray! Now it is the fall season right now, so we are gonna be making a fall silhouette. The first thing we're gonna need is a piece of watercolor paper. We are using the Canson XL watercolor paper, but you could use any type of watercolor paper. I'm gonna need a whole sheet of this, and I'm only gonna get one of these, so I'm not gonna be able to kind of mess up and get another one because watercolor paper is kind of expensive. So we're only gonna get one sheet, okay? The other thing we need today is what's called bleeding tissue paper. Now this is a special kind of tissue paper um, that basically when you add water to it, it is going to bleed onto the paper. Some of you might recognize this kind of a project, maybe from when you were a little kid, but you know what? We're all kids at heart, so here we go. We are gonna have a fall color scheme for this project, which means we're gonna be using fall colors. So the colors we see in nature in fall are yellows, browns, I did pop in a little bit of purple, orange, red. If you wanted to pop in a little bit of maybe like a blue color, you could do that. Or if you wanted a little bit of maybe a lighter purple, you could do that. But we're gonna keep our color scheme similar with all of our artwork and we're gonna be using these colors of fall. Now I'm gonna set these aside. Another thing I'm gonna be doing with this bleeding tissue paper is I am going to be ripping and tearing it. So what I could do is go ahead and get myself a little pile going of my different colors. I'm gonna be using very small pieces for this, and I don't want this to have a look of this hard edge. I want this to be Torn. So I'm going to create these kind of torn little pieces, kind of like a mosaic, right? And I could do that with all of my colors. So instead of using a piece like this that's cut, I'm going to go ahead and just tear up some smaller bits. I'm going to get all my colors going here before I start. And this is something you could do at your table, maybe with your friends at your table, just kind of sit and get yourself a few piles of the different colors that you're gonna want to use. Now you don't have to use all the colors. You could decide to only use two or three colors, but for my demo, I'm gonna use several of the colors here. The other thing I'm gonna need is a dish of water, and I probably should go grab some clean water because I've been using this water, and kind of a larger uh, watercolor brush. So this is a brush that has a soft bristles to it, and I'm gonna want plenty of water. Now the way that I'm gonna start my silhouette is we are starting with the background. And I'm going to be layering these tissue papers and creating kind of a kaleidoscope look or like a stained glass. So I'm gonna work in a small area and get that area of my paper wet. Now watercolor paper is absorbent. So it is going to start to absorb some of the paper, or I'm sorry, some of the water. And I'm only gonna work in a small area to begin. Then I'm going to start laying down my tissue paper. I'm gonna get a couple pieces down here, and then you can start to see the magic of the bleeding tissue paper. After I get a few pieces down, I'm gonna go over the top with my watercolor brush, and I'll notice that already I can start to see some colors starting to form here. Now it's really important that I overlap my tissue paper. I don't wanna have any white of the paper showing. So see that little triangle back there? I'm gonna go in, tear just a little piece and pop that over the top. I don't want any white of the paper to show. I'm gonna go ahead, wet another little spot and work my way across the paper. Now, what you would not wanna do is take some big giant piece and lay it down and call it a day. That is not the look we're going for. Oops, I got some blue on there, uh-oh. Bye bye blue. What I do wanna do is create, again, this kind of kaleidoscope look. So I'm using tiny little pieces, layering and overlapping. And as I overlap, I might get some other colors that form too. For example, if I take my red and I overlap it with a yellow, I might get what's called a secondary color, which would be an orange color. And I'm just gonna keep going and working my way across the paper. Again, I'm gonna go through and make sure I don't have any white spots of the paper showing. I can overlap pieces and I can work my way across the page. 
So this part is the kind of the fun part. This is the part we call process. So meaning that I'm not really thinking about anything. There's no plan really. I'm just sort of enjoying the process. As I go, I might say, oh, I think I want a little bit more orange. So I can pop in another piece of orange here and working my way across the paper. Don't rush, take your time, really enjoy this part of this project. It's really kind of the, the part where you can just kind of relax, be a little mindless, and just enjoy what you're creating and the colors that are happening. Now, I will also give you another hint. If you layer purple on top of yellow, you're gonna end up with kind of a brown color, which I don't mind, but just a word to the wise on that. So again, you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm going with a little bit more yellow. Now, if I need any more colors as I go, I can hop up and go grab more colors if I need to. But I'm gonna work my way around my picture until I get this entire thing filled. So let me show you what that's gonna look like. I'm gonna move this aside now. And here is one, you can see it's very wet. Here is one that is all done. So I have made sure none of the white of the paper is showing. I have overlapped. I have gone in with my brush and really, you know, gotten every little bit of this paper. And now I'm ready to let this dry. So I am gonna move this over to the drying rack. It is in the back of the room and make sure that I somehow have my name on this paper. So probably what I should have said, and I, I'm kicking myself now, but I'm gonna make some little mark here, maybe on the back of my paper, and I'm gonna put my name on here real quick before I put it on the green mark shelf, because these are all gonna look real similar. You'll also notice that your fingertips might be a little stained. Again, this is bleeding tissue paper, so it might bleed onto your fingers. So be careful not to touch your face until you wash your hands. Now I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up so, so carefully, move this to the drying rack, and this is gonna be the background for my fall silhouette drawing. And that's the first step of this project. So thanks for checking out this video, and if you liked it, that's great. Let's go ahead and get started on this project. All right, friends, so now we're ready for part two of this project. Now I am on Google. I'm gonna open up a new window here and I'm gonna do what's called visual research. I'm gonna look up something. Uh, I'm gonna type in fall silhouette, S-I-L-H-O-U-E-T-T-E. -E. Now I also will have some packets for you with some images, but I'm gonna go ahead and go to images here. And I'm gonna look for images about fall. Now, because I typed in silhouette, I'm hoping to get some black and white images. So I can't look at that one. Okay, let's go to a different one. Um, I can see most of them here. So this is gonna give me lots of different ideas. So you can see I've got trees, I see mushrooms. Let's see if I can click on this one. I see chipmunks or squirrels, and I don't really need to print any of these because these are simple shapes to draw. I see an owl, I see a corn cob. I want you to think about what does fall mean to you? What are the things that you experience in the fall time? Here's a nice pumpkin silhouette. Um, and this does not have to be anything about like the different holidays that might be in fall, although they could be. Um, this is just about nature. It's about, you know, the things that we might experience in fall, although you could go with a theme of some kind. Maybe when you think about fall, you think about, you know, the different colors and the different shapes of the fall season. So I want you to kind of think about fall and to, this guy's actually falling. Um, I want you to think about some of these different silhouettes. So I also want you to think about a theme for your image. So maybe you're gonna do all leaves. Maybe you want to do something with pumpkin spice lattes. Maybe you wanna do something with sweater weather. What are some of the things that come up for you? 
And while you've got some of these images open, I want you to do a little bit of sketching. So this is what I call sight drawing, okay? So I'm gonna have my piece of paper, I'm gonna look at some of these image, images, and I'm just gonna try to draw them. So here is my little notepad here. And real simply, with a pencil, I actually have a pen, but we're gonna pretend I have a pencil. I'm just gonna try to sketch out, let's do a little sweater. So I'm looking at this one here. And so let's see if I can draw a little, a little turtleneck sweater. Now, I don't know about you, but I look forward to wearing hoodies and sweaters and sweatshirts in the fall season. And it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? This is my little sketch of my, of my um, kind of little cardigan, not a cardigan, but like a pullover sweater. You could do a cardigan. Maybe cardigans remind you of fall. And then while I'm at it, let's go ahead and do maybe a little pumpkin shape. So what I'm doing is just gathering ideas. We call this um, envisioning, right? In our studio habits of mind, we call this observing. I'm observing some ideas. I'm envisioning what mine might look like. And I'm just kind of gathering up some ideas. So here's a couple ideas. You, you get the idea right here. We're gonna sketch. Um, and use the computer to help you, use the packets that I'm providing to help you, and start to sketch out some ideas here of what fall means to you, all right? And that's gonna be the visual research part of this project. So let's talk about what comes next. Okay, students, well, it's actually a little bit later and my background is dry. Now you can see it looks really different, right? Like some pieces are kind of loose but I know it's mine because I have my name on the back. So now I can go ahead and see how it turned out. Oh, you can see some spots I missed a little bit, but I'm just gonna carefully go ahead and take off all of the bleeding tissue paper and scoop it right into the garbage can because I am done with all of that. And you guys look how pretty this looks. Oh, I love it. It's got all those fall colors and it's gonna be a nice background for what's gonna come next. So, after I do a little cleanup here, I wanna talk about what our next step is. So I'm gonna be giving you a handout with some ideas, but we talked a little bit about the visual research. So I really want you guys to come up with some of your, your own ideas and sketches about you know, what you might think fall means to you or what you associate with fall. But these are just a couple ideas for you. So I will give you a few ideas. You can either use one of these, draw your own thing, or find your own ideas. But I am gonna start with a pencil. Now, I'm gonna be really careful and I'm gonna draw light till I get it right because once I draw this on here, it's gonna be a little bit hard to erase. But I think I'm gonna go with kind of um, some mushrooms. Now, mushrooms are a pretty simple shape to draw. And you could do whatever you want for this part, you guys. Again, this is your drawing, it's your world that you're creating. But I am gonna start light with a pencil. I'm gonna draw light till I get it right. And then I'm just gonna create kind of a simple mushroom shape. And I don't just wanna have one mushroom, I'm gonna have a couple here. And here's the deal. I'm not gonna be creating like a real colorful mushroom. All of my color is already in the background, okay? So what I'm gonna be doing is kind of more of a silhouette. So I can use black Sharpie and I can use um, the gray of my pencil to create sort of more of a silhouette. So I'm gonna make some different mushrooms here just to kind of show you what I mean. I know you can probably not see these pencil lines real well, especially with all this busy um, background. But I do have some sketches on there. And if you can kind of see those here, I have two little mushrooms. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to ink these in. So I'm just gonna use a black Sharpie. And again, I'm gonna follow my lines as good as I can. And this is where, you know, you wanna kind of try to be a little careful because once I get in there with the Sharpie, then it's gonna be there. Now I could do a couple things here. I could shade that all the way in. I could thicken up some of the lines, or maybe I wanna add some patterns. So I think for my little mushroom, I'm gonna add some dots. 
So I can go in here and start to color some of this in. So whatever you decide to do, you're gonna do your sketching on top with your black marker. Now I also could do a little bit of shading. I could do some dots for shading and do some stippling and add some value. But whatever you decide to draw on here is up to you, all right? So there's just an example. I think I'm gonna make my other mushroom a little bit smaller, so guess what? I drew nice and light. I'm gonna erase that out. I feel like this is, this is too much the same size as my other mushroom. So I'm gonna get rid of that, and I drew nice and light. And then the mushroom that I've already sketched, I've got some stray pencil lines, and I'm gonna get in there and erase those too. But I'm gonna make kind of a smaller mushroom here. I feel like that one was a little bit too big. So I'm gonna start over and do a little sketch and maybe make a little bit of a shorter, fatter mushroom down here to be the, the friend of this other mushroom. Yeah, I like the way that looks better. So now again, once I get it sketched on there, then I can go in and just sketch it on there. So this is really the, the fun part where you can kind of, you know, make it more into a scene or a drawing. Now you can do lots of little items, kind of like I'm doing some different items here, some smaller and bigger things, or you could just do like one big thing. So here would be an example. I'm gonna put some grass here around my, my mushrooms. Here's my little scene I'm making, and I might decide to add like a little, um, I might do like a little squirrel or something over here or some trees, but you can kind of see where I'm going with that. Okay, see how the black pops against that background? But let's go ahead and take a look at another one. Now I made a second background and let's go ahead and remove all the tissue paper from this one. It's gonna look a little bit different than my other one. And I could just walk over to the garbage can and just scoop this in. And I've got a nice fall colors here. And so let's look at my pictures. Let's say I wanna do one big image. Now when I think of fall, the first thing I think of is a warm cup of coffee. I love coffee and I've got a couple pictures here of some coffee. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a pumpkin spice latte. You knew I was going to. I'm gonna turn my paper this way so it's more vertical instead of horizontal. Let me turn, lift up my camera a little bit. And I'm gonna make one sort of larger picture. So for this one, I'm gonna do a coffee cup. And you guys may or may not know this, but I worked at Starbucks Coffee for many years all through college. So boy, did I, you know, get an addiction and a, a taste for coffee during that time of my life. So I still drink coffee every day to this day. And I'm looking at my image and this one has some yummy like whipped cream on the top. So I'm just kind of free handing this. Now, is it gonna look exactly like this image that I'm looking at? No, but guess what? No one's gonna see that other image. So this is just a reference, just to kind of give me just the shapes that I need for my, my little pumpkin spice latte here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little pumpkin on it so that everyone knows that's what flavor it is. Okay, and again, this would just be an example of if you wanted to do like one bigger image. So now I'm gonna go in with my Sharpie and I'm gonna draw confidently because I've got my, my sketched lines on there. And if you start drawing with one of the Sharpie markers and you know it seems like it doesn't have enough ink or something, go ahead and just get a different one. So that's my cup. Now I'm gonna go in here with my, my whipped cream and I'm gonna kind of make it a little bit, I'm gonna make, make it a little bit more of a curvy line. This is my whipped cream up on top. And then of course you gotta have the straw up on top and I can continue to add details. So let's go ahead and get my pumpkin on here. Again, pumpkin spice. Boy, they are good, aren't they? I usually get light on the pumpkin syrup though, because otherwise it's too syrupy for me. Okay, so I would definitely spend more time on this, but you get the idea. So once you get your background going, I want you to think about your image, think about something about fall, 
for you and go ahead and sketch out with a pencil first lightly your design and then go ahead and start to ink it in. And I also want you to think about, you know, areas that you might shade in all the way. So for instance, I might decide that on my straw, you know, I want to shade this in a little bit or put some stripes or something. But all of our sketches are going to be in the uh, black on our fun kind of painterly watercolor background. So have fun with this part of the project, you guys. I can't wait to see what you come up with and what your idea of fall is. So have a lot of fun with this one, and I'll see you later. Bye.